All right, this is the Knights of the Round Table podcast, and I'm Jeff Zyron. I'm here with none other than the eighth doctor himself, Paul McGann, and we are here at Icon 31. Do you have any projects coming out that you're able to talk about, or any future projects or anything coming up on? I do indeed. I just made a... Um, for Sky, can I, how are you with product placement? There we are. Yeah. Sky exists. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Um, do whatever for want. Sky Atlantic, I just made a, a four-part documentary about the history of the motor car, which uh, and I was presenting, mm-hmm. which is a departure for me. I'd never presented anything. In fact, I now have a newfound respect for people that present. I think they make it look easy, but it ain't. No. And... Uh, it's all about auto cars and oh, that, that, yeah, from it, beginning I loved to nowadays. It. I loved it, and so I was kind of not that I was an expert at, at, at all. Mm-hmm. In fact, I think that was um, that was what they wanted was to get some kind of ordinary, <laughs> ordinary Joe, you know, this ordinary sort of street driver who doesn't know anything I, that much. Th- cars. Th- doesn't know much, I mean. So it was a kind of voyage of discovery, and it's called the Petrol Age. And that's coming out on Sky Atlantic. It's out now. Well, it's going out now in the UK, so it won't be long before it comes out here. No, probably on BBC America or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I really enjoyed it. Did you? Oh, yeah. I really enjoyed it. It felt like a privilege rather than a a job, you know. It was kind of cool because they put me in these... And we went right back to the beginning, to the 1890s, you know, in the days when... Yeah, yeah. They cranked uh, up the car. And only cranked up the car. Listen, there was a car that we... There was an 1897 Daimler that you had to set fire to. No way. To start it. That's where the expression fired up comes from. Oh. You literally, you, know, you pull up you, you pull up the hood, you pour meths or whatever it is into this thing, mm-hmm. you, you strike a match, throw it in, stand back, watch this thing take, <laughs> take flame, and then only when it's hot enough to actually, can you start to crank the thing up and then blow the fire out and get going. How about that? That's pretty neat. Cars that were so old, they had tillers. Like a like a barge rather than a steering wheel. No one had thought to invent a oh, steering so wheel. Oh, like yeah. like that. It yeah, was great. You know, and then but then you know, so we leapt forward and backwards. They put me in Formula One cars. They put me in you know, f- you know, fifty sports cars. And then did you drive them on the track? Or I drove like them that? on tracks. I drove them on roads. It was so it's sort of like Top Gear, but more intelligent. Sort of like Top Gear, but without the sarcasm. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> While well, filming the uh, your, your Doctor Who in 1996, did you have any regrets or anything that you would have wished you could have done differently? I think the whole the, the, the whole episode of, uh, of making a pilot, of course, is what it was. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, from a performance point of view, is can often be about oh no, what might have happened? It nearly happened. We. You know, our lives nearly changed, and mm-hmm. in a sense, you know, our experience, I say our, because it was, you know, I had small children at the time, um, and me and my wife, you know, we were prospectively at least looking to have to move to Vancouver for six years, mm-hmm. uh, so, you know, was kind of looking at housing that they then sending the kids to school, the kids would have been little Canadians, and, you know, so it nearly happened, Yeah. but of course, it simply didn't, you know, and uh, so there's always that kind of jolt it's just the nature of the work right. um, um, things almost take off and suddenly you're back where you started snakes and ladders you know right. um, so aside from that that experience as far as the uh, the Doctor Who experience went yeah there were a few um, not regrets and you know, I'd, I'd regret very little anyway of mm-hmm. anything but uh, there were certainly frustrations that some of the ideas that particularly that I Talked about with Philip Siegel, who who got the thing made. Right. Well, you know his enthusiasm got the thing made. Um, those ideas that we discussed for the character, and were really enthusiastic about. You know, and had the thing gone to series, we could have we could have uh, worked on. Simply never happened. So, yeah. uh, um, and the pilot itself, which you know, I don't regret making for a second. It was it was a great experience. But uh, th- really, what was uh, uh, I hate the word remit. I don't want to use the word remit, but our task was to um, was to try and get something that we appealed, you know, with, was, was good enough to go to series. And in a sense, we had to tick a few boxes, if you like. Right. You know, of, uh, whether they were sort of iconic elements of the story, mm-hmm. um, even just like visual things, costume-wise. And right, so you had to give like a general appeal yeah, that the to, public yeah, would like. So, it. yeah, and perhaps that's partly the reason um 
why I don't want to say we fell between two stools, but you know, in trying to anyway, that's what happened. Right. Um, but no regrets, no. Okay. But just, but just the usual kind of uh, frustration. You know what, what might have been. There we are. Would you consider being in the new Doctor Who, but not as the Eighth Doctor, but maybe as a villain or another type of character? Oh yeah. 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 I'm not sure it would. Uh, it would. I'm take not sure they'd allow. <laughs> they'd allow me. That'd be kind of cool if you came back as like a villain or something. Or Has that ever happened? Has there been I, a precedent? Well, Patrick Troughton played a double role. Did he really? Yeah, the Enemy of the World. He played the bad guy and he played the doctor at the same time but it, I don't know oh like in Zagreus is almost right just like the Zagreus yeah where you were Zagreus and you were also the eighth doctor uh, that I can see how that is kind of allowable but uh, I think I'd rather go back and play it just a complete a non-doctor completely different character but of course they would never allow that would no they? they wouldn't would they they wouldn't allow that it would just be too it'd be an interesting plot be interesting you know, yeah. I'd enjoy it yeah particularly playing a villain Villains are better. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Black hat rather than white hat. It would be first rule of thumb. It'd be kind of interesting, especially you see the reaction of the crowd and Matt Smith and there's you and here this the villain. There's <laughs> <laughs> me trying to kill him. Yeah, I'm kill trying uh, to cut him over the knees. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I want my role back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so how fun is it doing the uh, the big finish audio stories? Yeah, they're great fun. A lot of the actors, you know, the London-based actors, think it's probably the gig of the year. Really? Well, I only know that because uh, everybody, any, anyone that's ever done one, always tries to get back in and do another one. Right. Uh, they love them, but they look after you. This is the reason. The studio in London that we use is kind of purpose built. Uh, it really suits. It's a great experience. They feed you really well. They look after you really well, and it's really sociable. Right. You know, it's uh, unlike say on a film or a TV set. You know, you sort of you. A lot of the performers sort of pass like ships in the night. You know, you're not you're not scheduled on the same day. But with this kind of thing, it's great. You know, stuck in the same place. Even the even the the, the, the vocal booths, the way the studio is designed. I don't know if you ever see pictures of where we. Has anyone ever posted pictures of the? Well, there's the the of, the, of the, the studio the, the online. The studio pictures in the uh, in the booklet that comes. With oh the yeah, you see it. Yeah, yeah, you see it. So and, you know, and and. Uh, the, uh, there's these sort of purpose built we call them like rabbit hutches you know you get your own little uh, own isolation yeah. booth which means you can all be in there at the same time and you can scream your head off and everything's on a different channel but you don't see anyone really yeah you see them because they're all windows oh, yeah. Window, yeah. so it's like a little battery farm oh, that's in neat. a nice way do you have a particular story of the, of, that's your favorite from the Big Finish on yours Zagreus I loved yeah uh, uh, just more like great days we had. You know, there's, there's mm -hmm. often parts of each. We, you know, we had a, I had a great time on the on the glam rock one, and, um, perhaps because I was sort of emotionally <laughs> attached to the oh, period. Yeah, yeah, kind of thing. And uh, no, I always have a good time. Always have a good time doing those. You know, and those uh, we, we we do them once a year or sometimes twice a year. And you know, we always look for we always clear the diary for those. Radio is great. You know. Yesterday, um, coming here from the airport with Ken, uh, who's, uh, with Ken Deep, and Ken, we were talking about radio drama, because mm -hmm. uh, it used to be a big thing here in the United States, yeah, you know, until the, the 40s and 50s, 40s, 50, yeah. yeah, and yet it seems to have kind of gone now, yeah. whereas in Britain it's still a big thing, it's still a, you know, a, a prestigious thing, and something that we take seriously and really enjoy, and you know, some people have real careers in it. Right. It's. I just think it's a shame that it's disappeared from the landscape. Did you ever consider pitching an idea or actually writing one yourself? I'm not a writer. No. No. I think it's because I lived with a writer. My brother's a writer. My sister-in-law is a writer. You know, and they're they're proper professional writers. And um, I'm under no illusions. Let's <laughs> put it that way. Um, I see that it's not something you can. You can just just, pick just up talk and about just do, and toy yeah. around with. I mean, I'm sure you know if you took it seriously, you know, you, might, right. you, know, you, you could learn to write. But um, I'm not one of those that thinks. Oh yeah, I think I might, I might write this year. No, no. Or at least you could pitch an idea. To you could pitch an idea. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I see what's involved with, with writing, and it's not for you. You know, no, I just don't think that I could. I haven't got the temperament. Mm. Any more than a professional writer could do my job. You know, right? Uh, easily, at least. You know. Um, I think I, I, I think they they deserve respect. Right. You know. So can you tell us what's in store for the Eighth Doctor and Mary Shelley? 
If I did, I'd have to kill you. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That would be tough. That would be unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> it would be. Yeah. We well, wouldn't have much of an interview left either, would we? But no, we wouldn't. There'd be an eerie silence. All right, fair enough. Um, have you watched the new Doctor Who, and what do you think about the actors that came after you? Uh, I've watched, you know what, I've watched actually very little TV these days. Um, I don't know why. Well, I do know why, because... I just ain't got the stamina that I used mm. to have. For, I kind of, maybe it's an age thing, I sort of resent it a little bit. I can't sit still. It's not like, not like I, when I was a kid. It was a thing, it was like a family thing when you were a kid. Right. You know, you could, you know, anyway, we only had three channels, I think, back in England yeah, in those days. And it was like a fa you know, you, like your dad would circle in red pen the four things you were going to watch that night. And you would, right. th that was it for four hours. And they were kind of events, you know, but now, you know, I just, I don't enjoy it now. I see them sometimes, I catch up, um, you know, uh, I'll uh, look at them online. Or so as the actors go, I think the actors that uh, came after me have all been kind of outstanding mm. in their way. Different. We that worked on the, on the so-called movie, we do feel kind of, you know, and we feel kind of gratified that... It came back. It came back, and uh, in our small way, I think we we kind of helped him, if you like, in that interregnum, right. um, which is a long time. You know, it was over a decade. Uh, I think we sort of kept it going a little bit, or kept the sort of pilot light going. Uh, right. But um, <laughs> I really, really enjoyed it. I was surprised um, at Chris Eccleston. Um, he's he's a really fine dramatic actor, Chris, and uh, you know, uh, rather serious actor. You know, he's 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 very, his, his great strength is, you know, serious, mm -hmm. committed. Um, you know, he's very edgy and uh, and uh, charismatic. You know. And put himself really into it. He did, but I was I was really th I was rather thrilled to see a kind of lighter side. Which I didn't think that he was suited. When I first heard that he was going to play the Doctor, I thought, wow, do they know what they're doing? You know, you'll get the heavy side, but will you get the, the sort of light side? And lo and behold, he could do both with equal facility. I thought he was brilliant. Um, he was really going places, I thought. Mm -hmm. um, of course, David Tennant is consummate. Right. Uh, and what comes across with Tennant is that he really, really wanted to do it, really wanted right. to be there. He was, you know, he's, it was almost. He was almost as big a fan as anybody out there. Right, it's know. like his childhood. It's his thing, you know. Dream job. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. and it really came across. You know, there was, there was great sort of love and passion in it, and of course, great skill. He's a, right. he's a fantastic actor. Matt Smith, I think, is a great prospect. Mm -hmm. I'd seen him since he was. Uh, I first saw him. I think he was a teenager when I first saw him working, and uh, he was outstanding then. And he's, you know, he's just he's only getting better. I think it's in, you know. Um, what is he still in his twenties? Twenty-eight, twenty-nine. Yeah, he's no? in his twenties. I think it's in, it's in real safe hands. You know, he's got that. What he's got is he's got that thing that David Bowie had. You know, that sort of he's a believable alien. Yeah, he's yeah. not an alien, but well, he's, yeah. he's, 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 a, he's got another worldly quality. You know, right? Um, which you can't buy. A really skillful actor. Anyway, I've praised them all to the skies now. Yeah. All right, now is the obligatory question which you've probably been asked a million times already. The answer is no. No? Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 42. Yeah. Would you like to be in the 50th anniversary if asked? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Um, how many yeses is that? 12, perhaps. Yeah. If asked is the big... If asked. ...is the kicker, yeah. Um, what I tend to say, and I have been asked the question a great deal, um, and I always say, all they got to do is call me. Yeah, it'd be pretty cool. Since thing. I uh, since I walked off that film set, whenever it was, 16 years ago, the phone's yeah. never rung. No. No, I've never been involved. Uh, there's and <coughs> of course being Doctor Who as well. In you know, in the Doctor Who being what it is, and 40, 50 years later, there's always anniversaries of this, that, and mm -hmm. you know, salient moments and big birthdays coming up. Right. Um, and so every year there seems to be, oh, look, next year is the... So -and -so. Right. Do you think they'll get right. you involved? And they never do. No. So um, Maybe so this year will be different. We live in hope. That'd be cool. It would be cool. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time and answering a few I'm questions. I'm a time lord. That's true. <laughs> so you have all the time <laughs> in the world. <laughs> it's a lord it over you. That's right.
So thank you very much. For You're your welcome. Time.